Thanks for tuning in. Ham Talk Live will be on the air shortly. Please stand by. Thanks for tuning in. Ham Talk Live will be on the air shortly. Please stand by. Thanks for tuning in. Ham Talk Live will be on the air shortly. Please stand by. This episode of Ham Talk Live is brought to you by Tower Electronics. For cables, connectors, and more, call 920-435-2973 or visit pl-259.com. And buy the ham station. Get your new radio or antenna by calling 800-729-4373 or go to hamstation.com. It's Ham Radio. Hey, good evening, everyone. It's Ham Talk Live. It's episode number 64. Hamvention Award winners 2017 recorded live on Thursday, May 11th, 2017. I'm your host, Neil Rapp, WB9VPG. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Ham Talk Live. Tonight, we're on our Dayton Hamvention preview again as we will introduce this year's Hamvention Award winners to you. And we are joined uh, once again by Michael Coulter, WHCI, the official spokesperson of the Dayton Hamvention. And we're also joined by some of the award winners. So we'll take your calls live in just a few minutes. And last week, Michael was here to talk about the latest plans for Hamvention, and he uh, mentioned to me before the show that if you still have uh, some questions about things going on at Hamvention, make sure you uh, drop him an email on, uh, he's good on qrz.com at w 8 uh, CI Whiskey Eight Charlie India on QRZ. If you have um, some questions about uh, logistics and, and things that over at Hamvention happening next weekend, so uh, if you uh, still have something going on, let him know and he will give you um, a hand and, and try to help you out however he can. Um, and if you missed the show, just go over to HamTalkLive.com. And uh, listen to that, or you can catch us on those podcasting services like uh, iTunes, or, or I should say Apple Podcasts. They changed the name. Uh, Stitcher, Google Play, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and we're also on YouTube, um, so you can catch us there as well. So tonight continues our official countdown to the Dayton Hamvention with a series of previews of upcoming events at Hamvention, and Radio Waves has graciously donated uh, a DX80 off-center fed dipole to give away to one lucky winner each week. So later in the show, we'll give you a chance to call in and win. And uh, so make sure you listen to the show live. We'll give one away next week as well. And congratulations to last week's winner. It was Joe, K0NEB. So he'll be receiving his DX80 from Radio Waves. Um, so again, uh, we want to mention the open house going on next weekend at the Voice of America Museum of Broadcasting. Um, they will have a uh, booth at uh, Hamvention as well. Uh, but check out voamuseum.org for that information as well as our social media sites. And don't forget about the contest super suite, contestsupersuite.com. Uh, many activities going on over there. Um, in the evenings during Hamvention, so check those out. Again, that's contestsupersuite.com. And the night before Hamvention, or as I like to call it, Hamvention Eve, 
Uh, we'll be broadcasting live from Dayton. So if you're in the area on Thursday, next Thursday, the 18th, the night before Hamvention, stop by the lobby of Spring Hill Suites in Miamisburg. That's on the south side near the Dayton Mall at nine, or I'm sorry, 417 North Springboro Pike. We'll be interviewing the live audience there and give away some stuff and take some calls. And, and talk about your favorite part of Hamvention. So if you're on the road, we'd love for you to call in and uh, join in with us. Um, or if you're there, we'd love for you to come by live. Or if you're at another location in, in the area awaiting Hamvention, give us a call. And uh, let's let's celebrate Hamvention weekend once again. And if you can't make it to Dayton this year, give us a call and tell us, your favorite past Hamvention story. So join in the fun. Drop by Spring Hill Suites, Dayton South, Miamisburg, uh, which, by the way, is sold out of rooms at this time. Um, so look for us on Facebook Live. Also, during Hamvention, we'll be doing some periodic live uh, video over there. So uh, check that out as well. All right. Well, I've talked long enough, so get your questions ready to go, and uh, we'll interview these guys a little bit so you'll get to know them, and then we'll take your calls at 812-NET-HAM-1. That's 812-638-4261. Or you can Skype us. Uh, we're at Ham Talk Live on Skype. You can also tweet us. And again, it's at Ham Talk Live on Twitter. So I'll be back with Michael and all the uh, award winners that are joining us this evening right after this word from the Ham Station right here on Ham Talk Live. This episode of Ham Talk Live is brought to you by the Ham Station. For over 37 years, the Ham Station has sold new and used radios, antennas, accessories, and equipment to hams everywhere. Give Dan or Jeff a call at 800-729-4373 or order online at hamstation.com. Ham Station carries all the major brands like Icom, Yezu, and Kenwood, and they have a wide selection of radio scanners, MFJ accessories, Heil Sound products, and Amplifiers by Mirage and Ameritron, Kushcraft antennas, and more. Easy online ordering is at hamstation.com or call 1-800-729-4373 to place an order and talk it over with the experts. The Ham Station, proud to sponsor this episode of Ham Talk Live. The grass may be greener on the other side, but at least we don't have to mow it. You're listening to Ham Talk Live with Neil Rapp. Welcome back to Ham Talk Live, the ham station. As you covered for both new and used equipment, give Dan or Jeff a call at 800-729-4373 or go to hamstation.com. Tell them you heard it on Ham Talk Live. We're on the air every Thursday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Hamtalklive.com is where you'll find us. And if you miss the show uh, during the live program, just listen to us on the website on demand or download it from your podcasting site, whichever one you use. We're glad to have Michael Coulter, WHCI, back with us tonight. He's the official spokesperson of the Dayton Ham Invention, and uh, he's here tonight on behalf of Dara to recognize this year's award winners. We also have Frank Bauer, KA3HDO, who was on the show just a few weeks ago. Um, he's the winner of Amateur of the Year this year. And we also have Rob Moen, VU2MYH, the Special Achievement Award winner. So, uh, guys, thanks for coming on the show and taking time out to do this tonight. All right. Um, this is Michael, Whiskey 8, Charlie, India. And, Neil, it's it's uh, wonderful to be on, on your program again. Thank you for your support uh, for Amateur Radio. And, um, you know, as a good communicator and communicating <laughs> about what's happening in, at Hamvention, we're all very grateful for that. <clears throat> and uh, I think you run a very, very professional program, and you take this so seriously. Anyway, I would like to take the opportunity to introduce the Amateur of the Year, <clears throat> uh, Mr. Frank Bauer, uh, Kilo Alpha 3 um, HDO, uh, high-definition operator, 
And um, <clears throat> Frank uh, currently serves as the international chairman of the uh, International uh, Space Station Amateur Radio. Let me get it right. It's Amateur Radio on the International Space Station. Um, a little bit about Frank. In the mid-1990s, uh, he proposed a GPS reception experiment on the AMSAT Phase 3D satellite, which you might know as AO-40. The experiment was to measure the signal strength of the GPS satellite constellation while Phase 3D was in high Earth orbit. Uh, the AO-40 experiment subsequently had been cited often in aerospace literature, and it and it remained the most comprehensive above the Constellation data source for nearly a decade and led to changes in the system specifications and applications. Um, he holds a, a bachelor's and master's degree in aeronautics and, and um, astronautics from Purdue University. By the way, it's a school where my daughter got her um, engineering degree from. His career, his career in aerospace spans four decades within NASA and in private industry. He's been licensed since 1974 and in 83 in preparation for the space mission of Owen Gary at W5LFL. He was responsible for setting up and operating the worldwide retransmission of space shuttle air-to-ground communications from Goddard Amateur Radio Club station WA3NAN. You know, I, I remember driving around in my car listening to that, and, and I'd tell my friends, I'd say, hey, you want to hear? Well, let me turn this on for you. And they were really uh, very impressed, so thanks for that, Frank. I was able to impress my friends easily. Anyway, Frank's been up to a whole lot of things, and I would like for him to tell you about some of the things that he's doing. And because we've always been impressed and, and have our eye on Frank, and he just rose to the top this year of our list. And I'll tell you, the competition is very, very difficult, very tough for Amateur of the Year. So, um, Frank, with that, tell us a little bit about what you're up to now, and um, go ahead and shamelessly plug uh, Eris and some of the other things that you're doing. Sure thing, uh, Michael, and thank you, uh, and thank you, Neil, uh, for having this opportunity to uh, to, to talk today. Um, yeah, Eris is, uh, I'll say, it's a really phenomenal program. I am really impressed with the volunteer team uh, across the world. Um, you know, uh, in the United States, uh, both ARL and AMSAT do a phenomenal job of supporting uh, the program, as well as uh, some of our sponsors, uh, uh, CASIS and, and uh the Space Communications and Navigation Organization and NASA. Um, you know, we are, uh, it's hard to believe that uh, two weeks after the first crew came on board, uh, we inaugurated the amateur radio station, and we've been operational ever since. And so that was that was back in November of 2000. And uh, since then, we've done over um, a, a thousand contacts. We're almost up to 1,100 contacts at this point. And, uh, uh, what uh, the the team has accomplished has been phenomenal. Um, you know, the, uh, being able to uh, allow hams around the world uh, to talk to the astronauts on orbit. Uh, when we get a crew member that's uh, that's uh, interested in talking um, to to hams on the ground, uh, and all of the students um, and getting students excited about amateur radio, um, that's a, a very important thing. Not only excited but actually getting licensed. And the interesting thing is it's not just the students that get uh, interested and licensed. Uh, even uh, the adults, uh, actually the head of the education group at Casis used to be a ham, and then he got uh, relicensed uh, from uh, his experiences with Eris. So I feel uh, very strongly that the, the program – you know, its primary goal is to uh, interest, uh, get students inspired and educated on uh, uh, getting employed in, in STEM careers. In other words, science, technology, engineering, math. Um, but in, in a critical piece of, you know, one of the important facets of ARIS is also getting uh, the general public um, aware of amateur radio <laughs> and interested enough to actually uh, become part of our hobby. Well, you know, Frank, um, 
we use examples of uh, all the time when we when we try to persuade people getting involved in amateur radio the ability to be able to talk to an astronaut i mean what a great way to spend your time you know spending around the earth and to talking to to children all over the earth and the work that you've done there has been to make sure that happens and um <clears throat> now you have um, some youth activities going on as well don't you Youth right. activities from uh, from an heiress perspective or other things? What do you? Yes, the heiress the heiress perspective. I mean, you have you have a lot of uh, um, you, don't you make um, uh, um, contacts with different schools? I mean, not you, but the astronauts as they. Oh, oh yes, um, oh yes, um, yes. So that everybody understands the heiress. Uh, you know, a uh, important piece of it is that uh, we have this international team and uh, we uh, are doing uh, we are working with students um, and allowing them to talk to the astronauts for about 10 minutes um, when the space station goes overhead in their area and as part of that they that it's a whole buildup of education they learn about amateur radio they learn about uh, wireless technologies. They learn about space. They learn about orbits and how when the space station comes overhead, uh, they learn about what the astronauts are doing on board, what kind of research they're doing, and that excites them and gets them interested in in uh, in the fact that um, you know science and engineering are actually very exciting activities uh, to to be involved in, and and they get this hands on. The, the beauty of Eris is that the students actually get hands-on experience. They get to pick up the microphone, talk to the astronauts, and, um, and, and as part of that, every contact, which we're doing about uh, 60 to 80 contacts a year, in other words, uh, at least one to two a week, every one of these contacts for each school is a tremendous learning experience. So in that regard, yes, uh, and, and we do them. Uh, we do them in schools. We do them in large uh, activities like um, uh, conferences uh, uh, and and uh, uh, Moon Day. We do this uh, Moon Day activity in Dallas, uh, which is uh, celebrating the uh, Apollo uh, Eleven moon landing. And so uh, we're doing these things many times uh, a week, and uh, like I said, about sixty, eighty times a year. That's that's the information that I wanted to hear too, Frank. Thank you. We got just a couple of minutes. Is that right uh, for before our first break, Neil? Yeah, we got about five minutes or so. Okay, let me ask you, Frank. Um, since you've been um, an amateur radio operator, I know I'm going to catch off guard with this question, but but one of the most exciting things that 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 you have seen as an amateur radio operator. Maybe working with Eris or or another organization. Can you, you relay a little bit of that in just a few minutes? <clears throat> yeah, you know, I, I want to. Yeah, I want to say something about amateur radio and you know the fact that uh, what amateur radio has done for my career, if you will. And and I think you you hit on it when you talked about the GPS activities and and how that actually affects amateur radio is affecting humans, you know, around the world. Um, so. You know, I got involved in ham radio, and I would not have gotten involved in GPS if I didn't have that ham radio experience. And um, so, you know, my, my, my background is guidance, navigation, and control, and GPS, of course, is navigation. But there's a substantial amount, as you're aware, of in GPS of RF. And get, getting comfortable with that through amateur radio allowed me, and I will say, in multiple veins, um, my work career and my amateur radio career i'll call it collided in a positive way multiple times and um so you know i I can't say anything uh you know the amateur radio activities and community is a tremendous uh, capability that has has allowed things to happen so relative to to gps what we were able to do is actually demonstrate that you can use gps at very high altitudes so one of the most important altitudes is around uh, in space is around the, the the geostationary belt where a lot of communication satellites and Earth weather satellites are. So we demonstrated uh, through that uh, experiment on on phase three D AO forty 
uh, the ability that you can actually use GPS at those altitudes and even beyond that. And because of that now, the most recent weather satellite, GOES weather satellite, now is using GPS for navigation. So, And it's getting tremendously better um, uh, images from, from, uh, from space and weather predictions from space. So amateur radio, uh, through amateur radio, through both the AMSAT activity on AO40 as well as, you know, that experience of amateur radio allowed that to happen to the point where our, our uh, weather satellite data is going to, the um, actual uh, forecasting is going to improve from like a five-day uh, forecast to a seven-day forecast. And there's tremendously uh, uh, better warnings that are going to happen for tornadoes and things like that. So this is, some, you know, this is that melding of amateur radio into other activities, scientific activities and engineering activities where um, this hobby is just phenomenal. And I'm, I'll say I'm forever, forever grateful for the fact that I got involved in amateur radio because it has helped my career and it has helped, uh, you know, everyone on earth from that perspective. You know, uh, Frank, you are so uh, <clears throat> humble <laughs> in your accomplishments and your giving back to amateur radio. I think that we're all, you know, <clears throat> I know our club has been pretty in awe of um, the things that you've accomplished. And I know, I know it isn't all you. A lot of it is your team. And, and But the ability to lead a team around, around the world and to make, to be, uh, have an effect on so many amateur radio operators – around the world and not only that to do things um you know to prepare for uh, uh tornadoes i know in ohio we get a lot of tornadoes and <laughs> so so at any rate um i really appreciate understanding that a little bit more and understanding what you're doing so um neil let me turn it back to you if you need to take a break yeah oh well, yeah we we do but uh we we, we need to get um Tell you what, let's do. Let's go ahead and get Rom, and then we'll save uh, Rob for after the break, and uh, and the uh, club we need to do after the break, and we kind of need to move along so we have a little bit of time for uh, for questions. So why don't you go ahead and and uh, talk to Rom for a bit? Okay, really good. So uh, thank you again. Frank, and I think we'll be back to you. All right, our um, um, special achievement winner this year is uh, Rom Mohan. Uh, Victor United 2, Mike Yankee Hotel, and um, Rom is the executive vice chairman and, and director of the National Institute of Amateur Radio in Hyderabad, India. And he was licensed um, as a radio amateur uh, grade one since 1988, and he's conducted a number of experiments on um, HF and VHF communication equipment. And, uh, and it's carried out a lot of propag propagation tests, organized training programs. Um, he's organized the expeditions, workshops, and uh, general amateur radio activities, including public service communication. Um, he, he's done so many things. Um, you know, one of the things that he, he has done is he's worked in a lot of emergency situations, not just sitting there in Hyderabad at their station there, but he actually, in the um, <clears throat> Nepal earthquake, he led a, a group up there in, of, of uh, Indian amateurs that actually were on the, the, uh, on the ground, setting up communications and, and working to uh, <clears throat> help rescue people and uh, reestablish the communications in that area. So I, I, uh, he's done a lot for youth. He does a lot for – he meets with lots of government officials throughout India. Um, he's traveling around there all the time to be a, um, a real disciple for amateur radio. And I know he's done a lot to you know, streamline their testing process. So with that, Ram, why don't you talk to us a little bit about what you do? Yeah, very bit. good morning uh, to all of you, Michael, uh, Frank, and Neil, and thank you very much for having me on the show today. And it's uh, it's really exciting to be here, talk to all of you, and thank you all for the kind words. Um, uh, firstly, it's um, amateur radio in India is also a very exciting activity for the youth. Uh, many many young uh, 
people in india wants to be in touch with the stem activities and get involved into amateur radio uh, awareness of this activity in india is still uh, 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 on a lower side i could say uh, we are just trying to uh, mm. introduce and create awareness on the activities uh, for the youth to get involved and enjoy and have fun in interacting with people all over the world get to learn things about wireless communications as they practice uh, the art of amateur radio and interestingly it has uh, grown into leaps and bounds a lot of young people are getting involved into the activity they are all excited to get into the uh, world of amateur radio uh, do it yourself concept uh, helps in building a skill for them and lot of technical uh, institutes um, are coming forward and they uh, they encourage the students to get involved in amateur radio it is our effort to take the message across uh, to all the young people uh, who want to get involved into amateur radio activity and when we are in india it requires a lot of uh, support from the government uh, agencies and others also because of uh, the regulations and um, opening up the things uh, amateur radio licensing is not as uh, easy as you get in uh, the united states they go through a, a lot of process and sometimes uh, it takes about a year to get a license but in the recent times and with all the effort uh, that has been put in over the years now you could get a ham license in about a month so it attracts more and more uh, young people to get involved into the activity uh, and depending on the individual interest some of them take up um, uh, building their own uh, radios uh, from the kits that are locally available in the market some of them get involved in social service activities or public service communication so it's a good support all round that we get uh, in india ram would uh, you mind talking a minute about your ram could you talk a minute about the um nepal earthquake and your efforts to uh, help people there yes michael uh when the incident happened in nepal in the month of may uh, 2015 um, a team of uh, operators from india um, uh, we were uh, given an opportunity to uh, uh, come to kathmandu and uh, uh, help the local amateur radio operators set up uh, the amateur radio stations and provide communications in the remote areas uh, which are very far and very badly affected uh, after the earthquake and we teamed up uh, with the local nepal amateur radio operators because they have the license to operate the radio stations and we had the experience of uh, uh, working in similar situations back in india so it it helped us uh, both ways and uh, we could uh, go around uh, different places uh, set up communications for the groups which are working to help um, uh, uh, local people and provide communications uh, like the scouts and guides um, uh, working there and other um, uh, organizations providing health and medical support the ngos which needed communications uh, for conducting their uh, uh, um, emergency operations and things like that and it really worked out very well um, as a team we worked along with the nepal amateur radio operators and uh, it was a wonderful occasion and even i myself went on to take a local uh, Uh, uh amateur radio license in nepal at that point in time um and and it was a very good support coming uh, locally in nepal and also from us uh, many hams from india traveling all the way uh, to nepal it's a different country uh, it's it's uh, so we took the effort to go there and help us and the government of india also uh, provided us a little support of um 
transporting uh, hams from India uh, to Kathmandu at that point in time did really help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was an, uh, amazing. I know that I had the, the very good fortune of being in contact with you. And uh, a quick, uh, just a quick story is um, I got I received an email from a gentleman knew I was in contact with uh, <clears throat> um, Ram in uh, Nepal, and his wife was stranded on a bus, and there were like quite a few people on this bus, and they were going from Nepal to Kathmandu, and um, we got the uh, um, GPS coordinates to uh, Ram, and then we found out later that there were 19 people that were rescued shortly after that um, by helicopter, th thanks to the fact that he was there and had good communication. So it's funny how amateur radio works. But uh, Ram is also, you've been involved in some other um, um, major disasters. Can you just mention yeah. some of those um, that have happened? Michael, in we, need to, we need to, I'm kinda, sorry, and you'll go we, ahead. We need to kind of hurry up. We're, we're running behind here, so... Um. Okay, Rom, I'm, I'm Rom, go ahead. That. Rom, go ahead and do he, do that. Has, but we'll we'll yeah. just do it quickly. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, in India, uh, um, we have uh, several kinds of um, natural calamities hitting the region. Are really uh, pretty bad ones. Uh, the ones uh, that happened in Gujarat uh, in 2001. Uh, the earthquake uh, took a toll on uh, a lot of people and there was a major disaster and hams could provide instant communications at that point in time. The Orissa super cyclone of 1999 was a major disaster uh, here in India and the tsunami of 2004 um, uh, in the Andaman Nicobar Islands where uh, hams uh, from India could go on and uh, help communications for the administration from different islands of this, and uh, I thank Michael and the uh, Hamvention at that point in time recognized the services and uh, gave the uh, Special Achievement Award for one of our team leader, uh, Mrs. Bharti Prasad, uh, who, who, who handled all the communications, and we were all part of that particular team and uh, helped out the administration at that point in time. And... Uh, and uh, we are very fortunate that the award comes back to our organization again after so many years. And mm -hmm. we thank the Hamvention uh, and the awards committee for selecting us. All right, Ram. I'm going to to help Neil out. Back to you, Neil. <laughs> all you, right. Ram. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you, Ram. And, and congratulations to all the winners. Uh, indeed, very deserving uh, amateur radio operators in their respective fields. And we'll talk about the other two awards when we come back, uh, the club of the year. And also uh, we'll, um, we'll catch up on the technical achievement award quickly when we come back. And then we'll take your calls uh, right after this right here on Ham Talk Live. This episode of Ham Talk Live is brought to you in part by Tower Electronics. Tower Electronics has been the ham's dime store since 1978. When you need connectors, mobile and handheld antennas, cables, or adapters, visit Scott or Jill at a ham fest near you. Or you can order online at pl-259.com or call 920-435-2973. Stock up on those supplies like PL259 and end connectors, SMA adapters, audio cables, soldering supplies, mobile antennas, and ham sticks. Their silver-plated end connectors are even used on the International Space Station. Tower Electronics carries MFJ, Comet, Daiwa, OPEC, Workman, and Ham Pro products. And don't miss their 0% off sale going on now. Tower Electronics, online at pl-259.com. Proud to sponsor this episode of Ham Talk Live. Oh yeah, you're talking ham radio, baby. You're listening to Ham Talk Live with Neil Rapp. Thanks to Scott and Jill over at Tower Electronics for sponsoring the show tonight to help bring you Ham Talk Live. They'll be at Hamvention inside building number three in spots 
including 3501. That's 3501 and outside in spots, including 9113. That's on the curve just outside of uh, Building 3 on the east. There's even a map on our social media. You can uh, see exactly where they are located. Or, of course, you can call them at 920-435-2973 or visit them online at pl-259.com and tell them you heard it on Ham Talk Live. And uh, listen to us every Thursday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Check out our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Just search Ham Talk Live. You will find us. And uh, before we take um, your calls... uh, Michael, we need to catch up here just a minute with the Technical Achievement Award and the Club of the Year. Okay, I'm going to be real brief. Um, There's plenty of detail on our website at uh, hamvention.org. But our Technical Achievement winner is Rob Brownstein, uh, K6RB, and um, he has been very instrumental. He founded the uh, CW Operators Club, um, uh, CW Ops. And then he's also worked really hard with um, CW Academy. So the, excuse me, the what Rob is doing and why, why we were really excited about him, about his work is that um, the using uh, CW um, and, and to communicate again and to keep that alive, even though it's not a requirement, he is getting so many many people. Um, excited into uh, using that mode. So we're looking forward to uh, finding out more about Rob and looking forward to him coming to uh, Hambenchen. Also, the Club of the Year, an amazing club, the uh, Clark County Amateur Radio Club, and they serve uh, the southwest Washington and northwest Oregon area. And um, they have, I mean, they've just knocked it out of the park with everything that they do. You know, we think that uh, DARA uh, is, a, is a good club, but I look at their website and um, find out all the great things that they're doing. Uh, it's, it's really a very active club doing a lot of amazing things. So um, um, we're looking forward to uh, seeing them come to Dayton. And we hope that you take a little bit of time and, and study a little bit more about them. I would look at their website. The uh, W7 Alpha India Alpha website. It is a, it's a very nice club website, and you'll see for yourself what they accomplish. Anyway, so um, with that being said, I don't want to want to uh, take away from uh, those two other winners. But since we have uh, uh, Ram here from India and Frank from, I'm not even sure where Frank is right now. He could be. Um, in you Washington. never know where he Frank is. Anywhere. Where are you, Frank? Anyway, <laughs> today I'm in Maryland. <laughs> Or, oh, <laughs> right. He's in Maryland. Okay. All right. So what do, what kind of questions do we have? Yeah. So let's uh, let's open up the lines. 812-NET-HAM-1, 812-638-4261. If you would like to join in the conversation here, or you can tweet us at Ham Talk Live. But again, the phone number is 812-NET-HAM-1, 812-638-4261. Give us a call. We've got uh, about four uh, minutes here. Uh, so give us a call right now and um, and jump in if you've got a question for Frank Bauer, KA3HDO, or uh, Rom, or Michael on uh, on the awards here. Uh, give us a call, 812-NET-HAM-1. And if you can tell us what... Um, Frank Bauer, KA3HDO, the Amateur of the Year, is the international chairman of You Can Win, the DX80 uh, off-center fed dipole from Radio Wave. So that's a pretty easy question if you've been following along here. So um, if you can answer that question, give us a call, 812-NET-HAM-1. And the first one to uh, do that correctly will get the DX80 from Radio Wave. So even get a chance to win tonight. So uh, give us a call, and uh, if you want to uh, tweet us, you can do that as well. And um, we just have a few minutes here, so uh, we will do that. Um, Frank, what what uh, what's your plans for next week? What's your plans for, uh, for Hamvention? Well, we have, uh, uh, of course, me, we're, the Aeris team's going to be in the AMPSAT booth. Uh, we're in uh, 
building one room uh, our uh, uh, booth one double o seven and so uh I've got a uh, number of individuals rosalie white uh, k k one s t o will be there uh, uh my uh, ops lead uh, dave taylor uh, w eight a a s so there's a bunch of us will be at the booth and willing to uh answer questions of course uh you know one of the big things we're working on right now is a uh, a big radio upgrade uh, of the uh, aris equipment uh, called the interoperable radio system so uh, you'll get to see that firsthand uh, as part of our booth and uh, that includes a, a power supply that can operate across uh, both the russian side the u.s side the european side and and, and the whole space station if you will and then we're going to be using a uh, uh, Kenwood D710 uh, uh, that will be in the Columbus module and in the uh, Russian service module. Sounds pretty cool. I have to stop by and see that. Check it out. 812-NET-HAM-1 is the phone number, 812-638-4261. If you want to win the dipole and uh, chime in here, give us a call. And, uh, Rom, what about you? Uh, what What's your plans for next week? Yeah, finally, thanks to Hamvention and Michael again. We have a forum to coming up on Sunday around 10.30. We'll be talking about uh, the emergency communications uh, in this part of the world. Um, and we will share our experience um, uh, to the participants there, how we get to do things for emergency communications in India. Um, the region where we come from in India... We have series of disasters uh, that strike the region. Some of them are uh, really very serious ones and pretty bad, uh, causing huge damage to life, property, and everything that comes across. So uh, it's just needed for people in this region to be prepared and get trained and be hams that can help out local communities at any point in time. So we, we do concentrate and take this uh, seriously to uh, help people uh, locally here so that's uh, that's what uh, we have been successful in doing and we continue to do that and we like to share our experiences with the people there and uh, probably learn something uh, new what's coming up uh, as frank has said something new is coming up and we'll try to pick up some things from there and learn what's happening very good. Well, guys, thanks so much for uh, taking time out to, to come on the show. And, uh, oh, we do have a call, so let me take that. We've got about 60 seconds here. So, uh, caller, go ahead. Hi, this is Eric in 9KDB. How's it going, Neil? Hi. That it would be the, the best friend, Eric, in 9KDB. What's, <laughs> what's going on uh, here, Eric? Well, believe it or not, I actually know the answer to your question. You know the okay. Well, let well, let's take the let's take the answer. So, Frank here, KA three HDO, is the chairman of the Amateur Radio on the International Space Station, or ARIS. Very good. We we got <laughs> we got that right. Oh, we got it right here. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. We got the right music now. So, yeah, congratulations. <laughs> Thanks for the win on that. And you have a question here to throw in? We got just a few seconds. No, no question this evening. I've just been enjoying uh, listening to you guys and a good interview there. All right. Well, thanks for calling in. Appreciate it. Thank you. We'll see you later. All right. We'll see you later. 7 3 to you, too. Well, hey, that's uh, a great show. And, guys, thanks so much for coming on. That is a wrap for this week's Ham Talk Live. Thanks to Michael Coulter, WHCI from Hamvention, Frank Bauer, KA3HDO, uh, the winner of Amateur of the Year, and Rob Moen, uh, VU2MYH, the Special Achievement Award winner. And also Rob Brownstein, uh, K6RB. We didn't get much of a chance to talk about him, uh, but the Technical Achievement Award winner. And... Um, and the uh, the club of the year. We thank you all for uh, all that you do for amateur radio, and invite everybody back next Thursday night. We'll be live from Dayton, so stop by the Spring Hill Suites, Miamisburg, if you can at our usual time, nine o'clock. And uh, for a list of all of our upcoming guests, visit hamtalklive.com. So for now, this is Neil Rapp, WB nine VPG, saying seven three. 7 5, and may the good DX be yours.